potential attack in Texas overnight, here's what we know now that Libs are trying to hide. Americans are still stunned at the events that took place in Las Vegas on Sunday night. What is being called the largest mass shooting in American history has a death toll of close to 60 and the number of injured in excess of 500. The hearts and minds of many are going out to the victims and their families. Sadly, they're not the only ones in shock today. A Texas family was also attacked by one of their own, but their story is going unnoticed. Read Bart News reports about this horrific murder in that took place in Houston just hours ago. Houston, Texas, prosecutors with the Harris County District Attorney's Office say a Houston man decapitated his mother and stabbed his father Sunday afternoon. Earlier this year, a court released the alleged attacker on bond after he reportedly punched his 76-year-old mother in the face. In April 2017, Georgie allegedly struck his mother in the face with his hand again. The criminal complaint states he struck her with enough force to knock out her front tooth. In May, Judge Catherine Kavnis issued a warrant for Georgie's arrest and signed a no-contact order as a condition of a bond in August. The jail released the suspect on a $10,000 bond on September 7. This heinous crime was carried out by an assumedly unprovoked individual, and it was an extremely violent crime, and yet it's not being covered, probably because it doesn't prop up the liberal agenda. You see, Georgie had a criminal record and carried out his crime with knives. Prosecutors charged Kiriakos Savage Georgiou, 27, with the beheading murder of his mother and the aggravated assault of his father, court records obtained by Briet Bar Texas revealed. Court documents show Georgiou had a criminal history dating back nearly a decade. A court convicted the man in 2008 on a second-degree felony charge of robbery. Judge Debbie Strickland sentenced Georgiou to three years in state prison. His other charges include misdemeanor charges of assault with bodily injury, drug possession, and driving under the influence causing an accident. In July 2014, Judge Vanessa Velasquez accepted a guilty plea from Georgie after he struck his mother in the face. She sentenced him to three years in state prison for the felony charge of injury to an elderly person. On October 1, at about 5.20 p.m., police arrived at the parents' home to discover paramedics treating the father for multiple stab wounds. Medical first responders transported the victim to a local hospital where doctors placed him in intensive care. Georgie exited the home carrying two knives, the Houston Chronicle reported. He is reported to have surrendered peacefully. After entering the home, police found the body of Jane Georgie, the mother. Her head had been completely separated from her body court records stated. If we were to do something about this crime, we would have to enact tougher standards for repeat offenders and admit that not all violent crimes are carried out with firearms. The Vegas shooting has sparked the question of whether this was terrorism, and with good reason. Thus far there's been no evidence that the attacker was in any way religiously motivated, but it certainly did strike terror in the hearts of many. Unfortunately, a whole lot of people on the left want to use this as a stepping stone to push for stricter gun laws. The only problem with that is that violent terror attacks can happen almost anywhere and with anything. The Twin Towers were taken down by a plane, and this couple was attacked by their own son with knives. Political commentator Ben Shapiro spoke to this subject brilliantly when one actor claimed that the events of Las Vegas were proof positive that the United States needs gun control. Knives guns, trucks, planes. All can be used for good or bad, and as Americans, we don't believe in punishing people for their potential to do evil. Taking away the guns of Americans would be ignoring the innocent until proven guilty premise that we cling so tightly to. There are many problems with the idea of more gun control, but one of the biggest is that it's a shift in power. Even if you're not ready to think that anyone in government currently has any malicious intent, you can't guarantee that it will remain that way in the future. The firearms used in the Vegas shooting weren't all legal, and yet they were still used. By that logic, murder is illegal, and people still do that. Why should we assume that those who are already willing to break the law will stop short of breaking that one? I understand, banning guns would make it so that anyone caught with a gun could be detained and the guns confiscated. However, 
that won't necessarily cut down on gun violence, it would just shift the victims to being exclusively law-abiding citizens. Maybe it would cut down on accidental deaths or suicides, but it would put a target on all our backs. Terror is what happens when someone does something that makes you scared you'll lose your life. Terror is when you're terrorized because someone believes something different than you. Terror is what would be in the hearts of every law-abiding citizen if only the criminals were willing to carry firearms. firearms.